Um, so thank you, Makiba. Tonight, uh, we are going to be starting with or talking about part two of our Public Service Commission series. And going forward, we're going to have more topics that we break into longer term series just to give things really the time that they deserve for us to have a really robust conversation about it. Um, so last month, if you were with us, thank you and thank you for returning. Um, we introduced who the Public Service Commission is, at least in the state of Georgia. Each state has a Public Service Commission and we went into a little bit of history about that office and what their roles are. Um, and then we did kind of the beginnings of a power mapping session, but tonight we're going to dive in a little bit deeper on that and on one topic in particular. So to go ahead and get us started, we'll begin with the, not the end, we'll begin with the agenda. <laughs> So tonight we are going to go through the organizing cycle and the four phases. And this is just to ground us into why our climate justice education meetings happen every month and what they serve, what purpose they serve in the larger context of our organizing work at Sustainable Georgia Futures. Then we're going to get into our community agreements. We'll be using the same Jamboard link that we always use um, and kind of lay some ground rules for the evening. Then we'll go into a review of last meeting. It'll be very brief, just a little bit of information about what a public service commission is, what power is, and why we're analyzing it in this context for Georgia's public service commission in particular. Then we're going to start with the bulk of the evening, the power mapping session. And with the power mapping, we're really going to hone in on the idea of self-interest and how important self-interest is when we're planning strategic campaigns or we have certain goals, organizing goals, um, and how analyzing what is near and dear to the hearts of the people that we want to influence, why that's so important. Then we're going to wrap up with some next steps and some resources as well. So actually we're going to do the organizing mm -hmm. cycle and things after the community agreement. So, Makiba, if you don't mind dropping the Jamboard link. Um, so community agreements are a tool that we as organizers use to ensure that safety and mutual respect are at the center of our discourse in the fight for justice. When we convene in spaces like this one and consider the community agreements we want to adopt, we like to inform our suggested agreements by leading with this question. What do you need to feel safe and open in our shared space? So Makiba just put a link in the chat. Feel free to click on it if you're interested. And then on page four, you'll find a blank sheet and you can start adding your community agreements there. And the way that a Jamboard works for anyone who's unfamiliar is you'll go to this left-hand side and you'll click the sticky note feature and type whatever you'd like for a community agreement. So if mutual respect is one. Then we just type that in, hit enter to save it and it populates it. So we'll take a couple of minutes to do that. I'll turn Amy Winehouse back on. It'll be a vibe. It'll be a great time.
Mimi is just always, always a mood. I love her music so much. All right, so we'll go through our community agreements really quick. So first we have, first we have the, let's see, sharing your own experience. Um, very, very important. We truly believe in, you know, not having to, what Adrian affectionately calls pimp somebody else's story, you know, like your story matters, your story is important. Um, and it doesn't matter what the circumstances around it are, it's still meaningful, um, even if, you know, the comparison game could slip in. Um, avoid or explain jargon, yes. So whenever we're talking about something, if there's ever any question, I for certain, will ask a question if I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> um, and I invite everybody to do the same. This space is safe. It's, you know, we're all here to learn together and we are very intentional about creating a space where it's not bogged down in things that make it difficult to understand a concept. So if you find us doing that, please call us on it. We will receive it in love and switch things up um, for the benefit of all involved. Right. So now back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, so those community agreements are gonna guide us for the night. And with those in mind, we can move on to the next phase, which is the organizing cycle. So I'm going to hand it over to Adrian, and she'll explain a little bit more about what the organizing cycle is and how these climate justice meetings fit into that cycle. So when we talk about organizing cycles, so we have the this from the industrial allied and foundation workers. Yes, this is based on um she said, Hey, I see more speaking notes when I opened the Google whiteboard, but they're not showing up on the Zoom video. Okay, Amber, we'll try to work on that. Can Amber, can you see the screen that we're on right now with the organizing cycle? It's hard to hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, no, let me make sure that my earbuds are connected. Can everybody else hear me? It's working up. That's fine. I'll just put on the charts. I have you. That's fine. Can y'all hear? Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? We're just gonna, gonna combine onto my computer. And I think, yeah. Oh, turning off video, maybe. Yeah, we can. We're moving, y'all, we're moving. <laughs> all right, if you all can hear me, thank you for letting me know you couldn't hear me. So we're gonna, we're gonna ground y'all in our organizing cycle. So um, the way that we are looking at doing this, these CGEMs, they are a part of our bigger programming. And so we like to have these each month to kind of like show you guys what we're doing, how we're thinking, what we're working on at the time, but it's a part of a bigger thing that we're doing. And so when we do campaign, when we're, we're in a phase, we're in four phases of what we're trying to do in order to implement our programming and also to implement certain types Type of campaigns. Our campaign, our current campaign that we're working on is building up capacity so that we can mobilize around policies that are happening right now. So uh, the way that in which we do this is we are identifying leaders, we're training leaders, our hope is to have neighborhood team leaders, we want to build community and expand our network, 
We don't want to tell folks what their issues are. Their issues may not be climate change or issues of that nature, but we want to identify shared issues in the community that we work on together. And after which, we do things that are called research actions, which uh, we give trainings on that. Basically, the issue that we are doing, we look at the people who are the issue that we've decided that we're going to organize around. Once we have shared what our issues are and voted on what we're going to organize around, we then do research actions so that we can figure out how, what are the targets and the tactics that we use in order to get the things that we want. So, and that could be public actions or something that is huge or big. Um, we see a lot of this stuff happening right now with the IRP uh, process. And so those are the things that we do and we do lessons learned. And once what we're doing is not like something that is random that we're doing, it's in a cycle. And so, and we have based this cycle on four phases. So if we could go to the next slide, thank you. Thank you. So we're in like the first phase. Of, well, actually, if you look at our phases and if you came to our launch, you probably saw this. Um, we have phases, four phases. When we say that we're in phases, we are in preparation and research. So we're researching a lot of stuff right now. You guys probably all know that we uh, presented, some of you know that we presented at the Labor Research and Action Network. We want to uh, produce this Georgia Green Jobs Report. So we have started the research leg of that piece. We're also working with um, schools like Georgia Tech, Morehouse, uh, and some other schools that we're working to do research throughout the, uh, the state in order to issue this report. And we also do canvassing. And when we do the canvassing, we have surveys and we're knocking on doors and we're collecting data in that way. And we're doing research around that. Also, when we're canvassing and we're out there, we're identifying leaders and we're identifying activists and we're asking them to come to our events, to our programming, and that has been going quite well. We're doing engagement, we're doing growth, we're partnering with many allies, some of whom are on this call today. And um, we're planning for collective actions and our collective actions that we're looking for is once we build up. Uh, a certain capacity in the three counties that we're in right now, as you all can remember, we're trying to be in 11 counties, but we only have the capacity to be in three, which is Clay and DeKalb and Fulton County right now. Uh, we want to do collective actions, uh, assemblies where we identify issues, and we're looking to do that in 2023 and 2024. So I wanted to ground y'all all in that because when we're using these power mapping, this power mapping is a tool that we're using to help us think about what we're doing and the targets that we're looking at. And our targets are the Public Service Commission. So I'm gonna let Ty give you guys a back, you know, give you a quick overview of what, you know, um, we reviewed last time. And then we're really gonna get into the self-interest piece that I think you're really gonna like that. You all can use that in your own prospective organizations. If you wanna know more about it, we have a full training and workshops on all of these things. So I, we did a part two of this. And the reason why we did the part two is because a couple of you all was like, okay, we really like this, you know, but we felt a little rushed at the end. So, hey, we get it. Thank you for letting us know that. So that's why we wanted to do a part two so we can really do a deeper dive. It won't be as deep as it was if we were in, in person and we had like the full, you know, like 60 minutes in order to like deep dive into it, but it's gonna be enough so that we can begin to start thinking about strategies around the Public Service Commission. All right, and with that said, I'm gonna hand it back over to Ty. And if you please let us know. That's crazy, literally handing it back over. That's funny. Um, so thank you, Adrian, for giving us more information about, about the organizing what? cycle and the four phases. We're going to go through this next part a little bit quickly so that we can have 
good amount of time to really focus in on the self-interest and power mapping pieces. So with that being said, here's a brief review of what we covered last week. So, or last month rather. So we really spent some time discussing what the Public Service Commission is and why they exist. Public Service Commissions began in the mid 1800s when railroads were being built en masse throughout the country. And they were meant to be a kind of liaison or a go-between for the public and the government or these private um, railroad barons and things so that the public wouldn't get screwed over. Um, and since then, in the 150, almost 200 years since then, um, public service commission roles have definitely shifted um, especially here in Georgia, and Georgia has the oldest, if not one of the oldest, um, public service commissions in the U.S. So their goal, according to their website, is to ensure that consumers receive safe, reliable, and reasonably priced telecommunications, electric, and natural gas services. It's comprised of five members with five different districts throughout the state, and they are determined by statewide election in most cases. However, Oh, we know that there are a couple of people who are on this list of current commissioners who have been appointed to their position and they don't really have the background that's conducive to serving in this role or the background that you would hope that they would have that would be conducive to serving in this role. Um, so we do have a couple of elections coming up for public service commissioners, and we're not telling you who to vote for. We're just, you know, presenting the information as it is. So right now, Tim Eccles and Fitz Johnson are the two commissioners who are on the docket for re-election or election come November 8th. Um, and Tim Eccles is in District 2 which I'm not 100% sure. Does anyone know like what region of Georgia District 2 is? I'm not 100% sure. It's like Northeast yeah. Georgia. The terms are usually six years, um, but there are some special cases. So like Fitz, Fitz Johnson, this is his first year um, in office, but he was appointed after the previous commissioner in his seat left to fulfill another role. I believe that he stepped back into the private sector. Um, so Fitz Johnson then was actually appointed by Governor Kemp. Um, and he now is in this seat and the seat is up for re-election this November. Um, but we do have some other elections. Oh, no problem, Amber. We do have some other elections that are coming up in the very near future. So Trisha Pridemore is in the next couple of years and she is the chairwoman of the commission. And then Jason Shaw and Bubba McDonald are both coming up in 2026. Um, and we're gonna get a little bit more into who these folks are uh, later on when we do the actual power mapping piece. Something. Would anybody like to share anything about the commissioners right now, like any personal experiences or um, any additional information about the elections coming up? And we're only asking this because we know that we got some people who are on here that are, you know, if you guys want to say anything, you know, or add anything to what we say, you know. Uh, uh, we, we are novice at the Public Service Com Commission compared to some folks that are on this call right now. So if anybody at any time wants to add anything, um, please feel free to do so. Oh, Neil, there we go. Go ahead, Neil. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know if anyone uh, here had the chance to see, uh, today was their final decision on the IRP process. Um, and I'll post it into the chat if y'all are interested. You can actually watch, it's not very long. You can kind of watch a little bit of their deliberations about how they finalize 
their decisions. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of jockeying back and forth between them. They're not always on the same page. Um, there's a few that are a little bit more interested in clean. And I only say a little bit, uh, a little bit more interested in clean energy and trying to project their support for like doing the right thing. It's, you know, but it's also in the context, which also make sure, you know, it's in the context of them trying to be reelected. Um, and then there's others who might kind of try to play it a little bit more straight or a little more quiet, try to like, you know, just kind of either follow what Georgia Power wants. Um, you know, there was even a, a, I think one of one of the candidates supposedly even wrote a, like a, uh, yeah, a, a motion to, uh, that was practically written by Georgia Power to deny um, the uh, expansion of net metering for solar. So, so there's, yeah, you know, there's, I mean, in general, they're, they're definitely not on our side, but there's varying degrees and sometimes they stab each other in the back and it's interesting to kind of look into their politics and how they sort of kind of position themselves. I can add, this is Chandra Farley, that all of these commissioners, um, maybe except Tim, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, started out as governor appointments. And then once you run, once you are appointed by the governor, you get to run as an incumbent, which means you have held the office before, which most of these people... Uh, like Fitz Johnson, um, Trisha Pride, more. They haven't even usually served a full term by the time they get to be on the ballot to run as an incumbent, which means they then end up first on the ballot, no matter what their last name is, because the way our ballots are done in Georgia. And so when you look at an office, um, particularly in a year like this year where every state office is on the ballot this year and our voters end up with four or five page ballots because we've got all the statewide stuff and you finally get down to races like labor or the public service commission people are just going to check what's first right how many times have you voted for something you're like oh i haven't really researched that office and you see an i by somebody's name and you're like oh well they've done it before i'll just vote for them and that is how the public, one of the, one of the ways that the public service commission and the state have been able to manipulate the appointment to incumbent process and maintain control of, of the commission. Thank you for that. So true, so true. And that, Thank you so much, Chandra. And that's really like a, a huge deal, right? Because when we don't know about the office itself, let alone the people who are holding that position and people are going in to vote, they're not really, a lot of people don't know that their states even have public service commission. Um, and when the both the voter and the person who is on the ballot for election don't really know all the ins and outs of the position, even if they do have that incumbent seat, um, it can be a really precarious situation. Um, we'll see as we get further in and into our power map that a lot of the commissioners who are on the board right now don't have any kind of experience or connection to energy, let alone clean energy. Um, so to have them representing public interest in that way kind of raises some red flags. And to Neil's point earlier, they do have different levels of buy-in to getting to like a clean energy, getting Atlanta or Georgia to net zero, but in order for us to move more of them in that way, we need to identify what their self-interests are and what are the things that keep them up at night thinking about like, okay, how are we gonna figure out this thing or that thing? What are the things that they like to do on the weekend? Um, all kinds of things, just so we can have an inroad 
into having a conversation about the things that we want to talk about, right? About moving the needle towards net zero or clean energy or weatherizing homes or what have you, right? Whatever our campaign is, as we want to do. So we are going to, I think in the interest of time, we no. okay. We're going to do this exercise, but we may keep it a little bit tighter on time. Um, so we did this power exercise last month, but it's definitely powerful and poignant enough for us to do it one more time. So we wanted to take some time to ask you all in the context of power, how did your upbringing and or experience around race, class, gender, sexual orientation, et cetera, affect how you think about power today? And what associations did those experiences create? Um, we're gonna take 45 seconds. You can think of some words that you associate with power at this point in your life. Um, and you can write them down or what, drop them in the chat. Um, and at the end, we'll take a couple of minutes to kind of share, and then we'll move to the next part. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer for 45 seconds. Um, and yeah, we'll just think of our power words. works. Hey, can you guys hear me? Thumbs up. I know last time Amber said she could not. White males 1%. All right, please y'all put them in the chat. People can hear. Wonderful. Okay, so listen. We like to we like to pose this question. We do it in a bigger, you know, a, a bigger form, and hopefully we can do this in person with you guys. But I always like to ask. We always love to ask people to think about power, because what we're ultimately trying to do here, the only way we're going to change any of this stuff is that we have to build power, and we have to build certain type of power. And I find in social justice groups like this is that we are so afraid to talk about power and what it means to us. So we got to get right with this, with our feelings about power and building power so that we can make change. So, I mean, I see that Ruth put in there that um, white males, 1%, Chandra, struggle, oppression, freedom, liberation. I want to give people a chance to talk about it. I have to say, as a Black woman, I in the beginning, before I started organizing about 20 years ago, I think that, um, I think that, I think, I think that, you know, in the beginning when I thought about power, I thought about power in, in, in a way that was just like what Chandra talked about, but I thought about it in a way in which Chandra was talking about it like struggle, oppression, freedom, and liberation. And, but not liberation, never freedom. I thought it about it in a way that as if it was something that was bad and horrible and terrible that could happen to me. And so um, if anybody wanna share, we're just gonna give like a quick 45 seconds because we're gonna get into the self-interest piece and we're gonna share that piece. So anybody want to share with their thoughts? If Chandra, if you want to expand upon that, you can expand upon that. You don't have to do that. 
Uh, but yeah, we just want y'all to start thinking about power. Any thoughts on that? Anybody want to share? Well, I look in, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I look in the private sector and I know working in banking, especially at my last bank, where everyone that was in power basically was a white male. And there had been some females who had, you know, higher positions and they were all pushed out. They were all pushed out of the bank. So, and we were, we were on a sales side type of role, which was not my original role, but the sales leads were all given to the white males. And there were about 15 women of a certain age, me being one of them, who were not given the leads. And as a result, we were kind of pushed out of the bank. So that's one respect. And as far as the one percenters go, being in banking and also in big law, before I see how it works with the top, not even the 1%, really the top 0.1%. There's always mm. planning and there are always five steps ahead. So no matter what you think they're going to do in terms of collecting taxes or estate taxes or whatever, there's a plan to get them out of paying. So, you know, it's really, it's hard because you know, Joe Biden, I think this is just to go off on a little bit of a tangent, but he's really trying to raise the taxes on the wealthy and he keeps getting shut down, not just by mansion, but I can see this, even if it passes, there's going to be a way around it. So anyway, if you have a good lawyer and a good planner, they'll find a way around it. So true. And so, I mean, and it's, 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 it is those ways, like what Ruth is talking about um, and what, what others are talking about is the way that we look and we think about power. We are thinking about like um, the power pearl and we're not really seeing ourselves as powerful, but we're powerful too. And that is the reason why we see a lot of this stuff happening right now around elections, uh, of, around the cheating that's going on. Uh, I, was, I wasn't watching the day the IRP stuff, uh, uh, Anil, uh, thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> I remember that it was today, uh, but I was watching about, you know, our uh, Fonnie Willis, you know, and them trying to squash, you know, this um, investigation into this election and how, you got 11 ultimate uh, uh, people who say that they were ultimate electors and they have this fabulous attorney. So to your point, Ruth, you know, if you have money, you can almost, swim, you know, weasel your way almost out of anything. And for the rest of us that don't have that, you know, it's something that, you know, we feel like we're left out of, but I, I want you, the reason why we want to bring up this power and we have deeper conversations about it, um, because on the left, I don't think that we really talk about how we need to use our power, or even if we're in center, how we use our power. So with that being said, let's go to this next tool. So when we think about power, I want us to, when we are doing this power mapping tool, uh, the, and the power mapping is a tool. It's an organizing tool. It's a tool that we use. And if you're doing campaigns, uh, I see that Amber said something. I also think there is power in the unity of people. There we go. We're going to get to that, Amber. You right on tab. Uh, <laughs> so there, we when we think about sources of power, we think about three sources of power, okay? And when we're doing power mapping and we're using this power mapping tool, we're thinking of three sources of power, right? So, um, and so we're thinking of positional power, which these public service commissioners, they have positional power. You know, Ruth just talked about Biden. Uh, and we, when you're thinking of positional power, we know the limits to that and we know what, what's the power behind that too, right? organize money. So when we think about that, 
we are thinking of lobbying. We're thinking of groups that are doing uh, that are doing things to influence. We're thinking of businesses. We're thinking of corporations that may be influencing that. We know the power that's behind that, but we know the limitations that behind that as well. And the, the third one asked to Amber's point, organized people. And we feel like organizing pe organized people are the most powerful, okay? And so organized constituents that influence decision makers. And we see that on the right, on the left, in the center, right? And there's different groups that come together to do this. And we feel like organized people is the most powerful of it all. I mean, like you could have this money, you can have that position, but if you don't have the people, you can have ideas about policies that you wanna change, but if you don't have the people, you're not gonna change those policies. You could have people who you want to be in positions, but if you don't have the, the, the people, then you can't put those people in positions. And so we want to focus more so on that so that we can win more, more people voting, more people participating, more people engaging, and it's for their self-interest, right? So with that said, let's get into this tool, this power mapping tool. Any questions about that before we jump there? All right, cooking with grease right now. I'm gonna review this self-interest stick figure and then I'm gonna, hang it, I'm gonna hand it over to Ty. Ty's gonna go, she's gonna give you an example of a self-interest uh, stick figure and then we're gonna give you, and then when she gives you, when, when they give you that example, once they give you that example, it'll be easy. You'll see exactly what you need to do. Then we're gonna do breakout rooms. We're gonna go into breakout rooms and we're actually gonna work on public service commissions. We're only gonna have two rooms, right? So I'm gonna be in one room, Ty's gonna be in the other room. We're gonna pick before we go in, which, public service commission that we want. Ty, which one you want? You can't say Fitz because we're giving an example of him. Well, you could, you could do Fitz. We didn't do too much. I, I'm taking right. right. Tim is a hot mess to me off the record. <laughs> I, I find no, that's him very to on be the record. <laughs> like a little spectacle does not begin to describe. So for entertainment value alone, I will do Tim Eccles, I think. Okay, well, whoever is in my group, as long as we are not picking Tim Eccles, I'm gonna let y'all pick. Oh, that is hilarious. Okay, um, <laughs> all right. So, um, when we're thinking about, say, like someone like Tim Eccles or uh, Fitz Johnson, okay, I think a lot of times when we, these, the public service commissions, when we think about trying to motivate them and, and move them and stuff like the IRP or anything like that, we have to be more like some people and think of the long game. When you're doing strategic campaigning, there are three sets of goals that you should have. You should have your overall goal that you want. You should have your intermediate goal that's the middle goal, right? That's really like policy and legislation. So if we want net zero, right? If net zero is our goal, right? That's our overall goal. We want net zero. We want companies that if they are uh, putting out pollution, that they have a solution that takes, that puts back in. If we want all of that and we want that net zero for Georgia or for the United States, if that's our overall goal, that's our overall goal. That's the big goal that we're trying to accomplish, right? So the mid-level goal are policies and legislation and actions that support that. So we have to be able to think about what those things are and we may have those. And then you have short-term goals. Short-term goals are the goals in which, okay, these are immediately happening, is moving things. Uh, Short-term goal is if we would have gotten certain type, type of people on the PSC, okay? We want certain type of people on the PSC. Those are really short-term goals because even though it's like, oh, it could happen in one or two years or three years or four years, those are short-term goals. They help us, those short-term goals, say those people who are on this commission can help us get our intermediate goals and ultimately our overall goal. Any questions about that? I'm gonna stop right there, questions. I'm gonna look through, see if any hands are up. Was that, was that clear? 
Okay, moving forward. All right, so what we're doing here with this power mapping tool um, is we're looking at the self-interest of each one of these short-term goals. So when we think about the public service commissions and us trying to change the makeup of it, or we're trying to sway them to do the things that we want to do, we need to be able to know who these folks are. So when we look at self-interest, it's like the issues in their head. We got this little stick figure, like how do they think? What do they think about? So their heart, you know, what are the people in the places that they care about? Their gut. Their personal injustices that you that that they've been personally affected by, their hands, what skills, what have they, what they've actually went out and did a job and doing or went to school for or did whatever. And so you're like, how do I, we find this? A lot of this stuff is out here is on the internet. We're able to do it. And in other ways, you know, you may know people who know folks. So I don't know if y'all remember, but in that organizing cycle, remember we had research actions, right? So those research actions is when we use that. That's a format we use to go and meet with people who are like a Tim Eccles to see what is in his head, what is in his heart, what is in his gut. And we ask him those questions. Those, that's an action that you could do as a community together is to go and have individual meetings to figure that out, to try to figure out what would truly motivate this person to move, right? What would truly motivate these people to do certain types of things? So I'm gonna stop right there. Any questions about that? All right, if you have questions, you all can ask me throughout. Next slide. Oh, no, you good. Okay. So Tim Eccles, I mean, uh, Fitch Johnson. So Ty put this together, Ty killed this. Ty, you want to go through how you put this together? So Ty researched this, and we're going to do this for each one of the uh, PSC folks. Here's the thing though, we got some, we got to, hey, hey uh, Makiba, when we split up people and put them in rooms, make sure that you do not put Neil and Chandra in the same room. You got to split them up because, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Now, Ty, I'm going to let you, I'm going to give it to you and I'll put myself on mute. So this, I'm a big fan of when you have those huge, huge goals, break it down. What's something that I can do in like two minutes to get started towards moving towards that big thing, right? So if our big organizing overarching goal campaign is to get Georgia to net zero carbon emissions, or is to have a public service commission that's representative of the interest of Georgia citizens, what have you, you know, this is a good place to start. And you can start with self-interest with any bit of information that you have about someone. So we chose to do a little self-interest snapshot of Fitz Johnson in particular, because he is the public service commissioner in the district surrounding Atlanta. So he is in, I think he does Fulton, DeKalb, Clayton and Cobb counties, and he may have a couple of other uh, counties in his jurisdiction. But He's in researching- Clayton and DeKalb. Oh, sorry. sweet. Which Thank is you. district three. Thank you, Chandra. Mm -hmm. um, so he's Fulton, Clayton and DeKalb, and he, um, was is the most recent addition to the commission as to date. Um, and all of this comes directly from his website, from his social media, those types of places. So for his head, um, what he thinks about most often, he has been in business ownership and development for 20 plus years. Um, he is a businessman by trade and that's what he has the most experience in. He's also self-proclaimed a lifelong Republican. So that's something that, you know, those Republican ideals are what's going to be at the top of mind for him. For his heart, 
He is cited as an attendee at Cumberland Community Church. So faith is something that may be dear to him. Um, he's a like sports coach. He does a lot of youth sports coaching in his spare time. He's also married, has adult children and quite a few grandchildren as well. Um, for gut, this is where being closer to what we call the target, right? the person that we are trying to influence in our campaign. If we know somebody who knows him, um, we could get more information about any of these places, right? But the gut is especially something that the closer you are to the target or the situation, kind of the more advantageous it is to have that information. Um, so from his website, I could only gather that civic engagement was something that was very near and dear to his heart um, and his gut because he, and this may just have to do with the fact that it's an election year for him. And this is his first election as a public service commissioner, but he has been like going to barbecues. He'll go to the gun range and, you know, do some things like that to drum up support and drum up voters. I didn't know that he was a Q. Okay. Um, so he's, yeah, membership in Omega Sci-Fi. So all of these things are really important and kind of getting to know what organizations is very important, what organizations, church memberships, any kind of business affiliations that he has. So even if we can't stand in front of the Public Service Commission one day and really speak our mind, maybe we could go to Cumberland Community Church. Maybe the Omega Sci-Fi chapter that he's a part of, um, we could talk to them. Maybe mm -hmm. we could talk to the board of trustees that he serves on at Wellstar Health Systems. Um, for hands, he also has an extensive military service career. He's a 20 year army veteran. He has a law degree from University of Kentucky, I believe. And he's a board member for several organizations, including Wellstar. So all of these little like, tidbits of information um, I'm thinking, okay, what I'm thinking is he may have crossed, this is, this may not be any of my business, but he may have crossed at Troy <laughs> University based on like his academic trajectory. I think that's the most likely situation. But so now once you have all that information, once you know the self-interest sections and you know, like what he thinks about or what they think about with their interested in what moves their heart. I mean, even if they have a dog, like y'all, I'm talking whatever information you can find, you become the FBI and you figure it out, then you can pop it onto a power map. So this structure is really helpful in laying out the organizations, affiliations, and um, systems that are closest to your target person, which in this case is Fitz Johnson and map them out according to their amount of power and their support for your position. So the up and down axis is for, you know, how powerful is this entity? Being a part of the army, that's pretty powerful. The army is a pretty powerful institution, especially in the United States. So that we will put closer to the top. However, at this point in time, the reason why I put the U.S. Army veteran at that point in the power map is because the Army may be traditionally a little bit more conservative. This is also something that and once y'all get in y'all breakout groups, y'all can decide what's most important, right? What you feel like should be in these quadrants. The, the most important thing is the quadrants, right? So we see that what is, we know that this Republican party, as you can see, Ty put this, this close to the other side, you know, because they're probably gonna strongly oppose what we're trying to do around climate change, right? And the green economy, creating equitable pathways to the green economy. So uh, the US Army, we put that up there, but y'all may, as a group, feel like it's something else. Ty and I, we're just going to be facilitating the discussion and so you all will be plotting and putting whatever and when we come back as a group you can explain why you um why you decided to do that um so 
<laughs> so Chandra has her hand up and, and Chantel is clowning in the chat. <laughs> Um, so I have a question about about the quadrants. Is this are these the places or and I'm maybe jumping ahead, but just trying to understand. So this would be okay. We want to. I think I heard Ty say, like, show up at Cumberland Community Church, or oh, does Gipple have a green team at? Cumberland community like are these places to go to apply pressure or and when I say show up maybe that doesn't mean like you know actually in person I'm just trying to understand like this know, is great says. this is great questions so what we're doing is this like you could ch choose to do that I don't know if I would be showing up at people's churches but I mean that's just me I I know people who do it. I've worked on campaigns that we've done that. But here's the thing. What we want to do is we want to look at, uh, these are our targets. And we what, what we're trying to do is like, we're putting this Cumberland Church to say, this might be a pressure point. It may be a strategy that's behind that. I just work with the Amazon campaign in Bessemer, Alabama with a labor union and a community group. And one of the things that we did is we had on Sunday, we would go out and we would flyer uh, churches, churches in the areas that we were trying to influence the people to vote a certain type of way. So, I mean, it could be something that is like that. So to answer your question, yes, Chandra, these are some of the spots, but it's also so that we can get to know these people a little bit better. So when we're planning our tactics, they can be more strategic. Does that make sense? Yep, that's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a great question. Any other questions, more questions like that. Please, 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 please. Anyone? Everybody knows what they're, what, when they get in there, what they're gonna be doing. Okay, well, if you can't think of any questions now, please ask me and Ty when we're in the breakout rooms and Ty is gonna give you all the instructions and then we're about to be put in the breakout rooms pretty soon. So that was perfect. Like, yes, this power maps, as we, they are a tool that help us plan strategic actions and it's within people's comfort levels that are working on the campaign, right? So um, this tool kind of helps ground us into some places where if we have things that are in, especially this upper right-hand quadrant, that votes really well for us. Because if we go to those places where people strongly support our position and they're powerful, that means that we can really get maybe even some quicker movement on our campaigns um, or work more diligently in one particular area towards influencing our target in the way that we want. So with that being said, now it's time for us to do the thing. So. I'm gonna skip over the objectives in the interest of time. Um, the objective is, as my partner says, to investigate like you are in the mafia. Like you're trying to take down, not that you're trying to take anybody down, right? But like that you are getting the information that you need to get the result that you want. So for very brief instructions, we are going to be breaking out into two breakout rooms. Adrian will be in one, I'll be in the other. Um, and we'll be taking one public service commissioner and taking some time to, through some helpful links that we're going to provide and drop in the chat, um, we're going to kind of break down what the self-interest of these public service commissioners are. So just as a brief reminder, you're looking for the things that they think about, so what's in their head, the things that they care about, what's in their heart, the issues that personally affect them, so what's in their gut, and then their hands, what are their skills and experiences that may be impactful in shifting the conversation in the direction that we want to shift it to. Um, so Makiba is gonna go ahead and break us up into breakout rooms. Um, and then once we get in there, we're going to take probably about five minutes to do a little bit of digging with those um, links mm -hmm. that we have. 
And then we're going to go into the Jamboard. So the first link that Makiba sent under Sustainable Georgia Futures in the chat, that first link is going to be where you put your power map. Um, and then the second link is going to give you some like kind of research places that you can go for your chosen commissioner. So Makiba, if you don't mind splitting this up, we'll go ahead and get started and then we'll come back at 725 to wrap everything up. Okay, um, uh, who wants to, so the way we're going to do it is um, we're going to let uh, people from each one of the groups, well, first of all, we want to ask before we go back to the slides, okay, how was this? And if you were here the last time, how, it, it, for me, I got to say for myself, this was different from the last time. I felt like we were more focused this time and <laughs> understood it a little bit more. That was for me, but I wanna get for people in my team and the other team too, how did y'all feel about the process? How did y'all feel about what was going on? So that's the first question. Uh, it was very concise and engaging. Thank you, Zion. All right, no one else, okay. So, um, well, if you guys don't want to talk about the process, that's totally fine. It was more in depth. Thank you, Ruth. Um, that's fine. Uh, let's get to uh, Ty, if you don't mind sharing your screen and then find someone from your group to speak and someone from my group, I, if, if someone who was speaking, if y'all, oh, y'all are put together, really. <laughs> y'all are really put together. Okay. Hey, somebody, can y'all, can we cheat? Can someone go to our page and kind of like, Neil, Neil, I see you doing it. Look us up, Neil, because <laughs> ours don't look like it. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Ty. Find your person. <laughs> Would anybody um, within our group, Chantel, Chandra, Zion, anybody want to speak to kind of what we talked about. Um, it was right. pretty, oh we yeah, sorry. Gotta, I was like, we ain't all gotta speak at once. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we had a, we had a good time. Um, I think in the overall, the exercise was um, probably one of the best power mapping events I've been to in a while. Um, so I appreciate y'all. We were able to, you know, investigate like the FBI <laughs> and um, <laughs> dig up some some things about Fitz Johnson. I think, uh, and Chandra shared a lot of this and Zion as well. Some of the, the most, um, I guess, surprising things about this person is that they don't really actually have any background in energy or environment at all. Um, and, you know, was a political appointee. Uh, Chandra might want to share like why that was, uh, but for whatever reason, he's now the first black uh, commissioner uh, in a very long while or maybe ever to ever serve on this commission and also happens to be Republican. Uh, also found out like that they might not have lived in District 3 in the district that they represent, um, but because they were appointee and seems like they have a lot of uh, social capital, 
um, I guess was able to get a house really quickly and do those things. So um, yeah, kind of dealing with a really interesting individual that clearly y'all can see from our power mapping has a lot that's on the, uh, the strongly opposing side of our position. But some of the things that we talked about that could lean in our favor are the Q, Omega Phi Psi, uh, Psi Phi fraternity, civic engagement, and the fact that he does have family that um, volunteers with the Citizens Climate Lobby. Um, so yeah, definitely a really lively conversation. I don't know if y'all want to add anything else, or if I even did what I was supposed to do. I kind of just said whatever came to mind, but you did a great job. Thank you, Chantel. No problem. Yeah, we okay. were key key in, in our group. It was great. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Now, flip it to ours. Uh, hopefully, somebody has cheated a little bit and went in and moved around some of our... Y'all even color-coded this thing. This is... This is Ty written all over it. What did Ty tell y'all? Y'all can only use yellow and green. That's what Ty told y'all? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who did y'all have as your commissioner? Okay, Patricia Pride more. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Come on, Neil, this is great. <laughs> Neil, Neil and Ruth, Neil and Ruth, uh, y'all were y'all were putting Amber. Everybody was putting stuff in. Y'all just jump in and tell us y'all thoughts. Come on now, come on through. Well, yeah. we learned we learned that she was involved in a lot of regulatory commissions for other states. So she seems to be leveraging her position all over the country. That's what mainly what I learned. She yes. did, have, right? And Neil can go ahead since it, he lives in Georgia and he was <laughs> much more involved. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so Trisha Pridemore is like by far the most hardcore like industry, like fossil fuel supported, um, you know, just unabashedly has taken money from those, uh, you know, um, you know, Georgia powered natural gas companies, nuclear companies and whatnot. Um, I did find some interesting stuff about her history. She's like a pretty hardcore, like, like really hardcore Republican activist who was kind of supported by Nathan Deal when he was governor. Um, so we, we don't have that up here, but uh, she she founded the nine one two conservative project. You know, there's some there's a, she's basically like the most anti of the anti of all the public service commissioners, and she is very. You know, very in your face about it so um oh she uh i did hear that she had uh, we didn't note this down but she had made a comment that energy burden is just like jargon made up by the left uh it, and she mentioned that in court that wasn't just like in passing that was like in a court case so like she's she's pretty much the worst of the of the litter so um Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Uh, this woman, this woman, I'm, I can't wait till she comes up, you know, in the campaign we're going to launch because, yeah. She said, what? You <laughs> shocked she said she said <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she off the chain. She is off the chain. Okay, y'all. We want to ask for like a couple more minutes, just a couple more minutes, because uh, we don't like to go over, but we really had a great time with this. Uh, so we're going to skip a couple of things. Ty, if so, I just want to say this is our last time doing this. We, we do do this with groups and everything like that. And like I said, we do make it much longer. If y'all want to learn more about it, you know, or if you want us to do it, you know, with your group or something that you're really honing in on targets that you really want to look at to help out with your campaigns, uh, we are open to uh, do this and um, do it in person and make it really fun. Uh, and so... Uh, with that, Ty, just a couple more minutes. We're going to wrap up. If anybody has any questions, anybody had any questions or comments, we can give you 
about 30 seconds right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, Ty, it is over to you. Thank y'all so much. This was so much great. This was so much fun. Thank y'all so much. I'm just going to echo Adrian. This is fantastic. Um, thank y'all for your dedication, for joining us in the FBI hunt. We appreciate it. Um, and like Adrian said, we will be, uh, this is the last public service commission meeting that we're having, but um, we are still going to be engaged with working around the public service commission, right? Especially with these elections coming up and especially with elections happening in uh, district three in particular, since that impacts where our offices are located and um, all of those things. So. If you want to get more information about Georgia's Public Service Commission or the Public Service Commission in your state, most states have a website for their Public Service Commission and that can be a good place to start. Also this website called Ballotpedia, which I'll drop in the chat, um, can also be a good place to look up some information about your um, commissioners. So let's see. Um, Chantel, you had your hand up, I think. I do. I have a really quick question. I'm sorry, because um, I know we're trying to leave. But do you all know of any, comp like, I don't know what, opponents or other folks that are learn or might be going for District 3C, or is it just like one person's going to be on the ballot type deal? We were trying to, Chantel, we almost got away without having to talk about that. <laughs> Dang, okay. So, I'm sorry, you ain't got to answer. Y'all have to answer. Y'all have to answer. But we will, but here's the thing. We shall open the floor for anyone who wants to give a little tidbit on that. And I'm putting myself on mute. 